Hello there. In this lecture video, we're going to go over a section I call 6.0, which is a Calc 1 review. What it really is, is some of the important parts that you should have learned in Calculus 1, namely how to find the derivative and what it means, um, how to use the chain rule in order to find derivatives, and then how to find antiderivatives, and of course, integration by substitution. So let's go over topic number one, which is a review of what a derivative is, one of the most important concepts in calculus. So the derivative of a function f is its own function. And we often use this notation and say f prime of x. It's the limit as h goes to 0 of the difference quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. It's, of course, a difference because there's subtraction in there, and it's a quotient because there's division, hence the name the difference quotient. Now, if you can find this derivative, if this limit exists, then we say that the function is differentiable. Differentiable is the fancy way of saying can be ta can take the derivative of it. Um, Differentiate because difference is in the difference quotient. Now, if f is differentiable at, at any every point in the open interval, then we say f is differentiable on that interval i. So, now <clears throat> a couple of things to remind yourself of. If this is your function f of x, so let me just highlight this right here. If that's f of x, then the derivative is a function in and of itself. It's a function in its own right. So f prime of x. It makes its own graph, which has its own properties and such. Um, the process of finding that derivative is called differentiation. If you remember, every Calc 1 instructor in the world has you practicing with this limit of the difference quotient. And then after about one section, we all go, well, that was terrible. Let's figure out some other ways to do it, like the product rule, the quotient rule, chain rule, that kind of thing. Now, the domain of f prime is no larger than the domain of f. So first of all, the domain of f if there's a value for which the function does not exist, then the derivative definitely does not exist, right? But then it's possible that the derivative exists, or excuse me, the derivative does not exist even if the function did. That can happen. For example, at sharp corners or cusps, if you remember that from Calc 1. Now, if the limit does not exist at some x value, neither does the derivative. Exactly. So if your function has no value or if the limit does not exist, then the derivative does not either. Now, there are a lot of ways to notate or denote the derivative, um, one of which is probably the one you've seen the most often, which is the Bernoulli notation, which he sort of stole from Newton. Isaac Newton, of course, being one of the people that invented calculus, um, Isaac Newton did everything with dots. And Bernoulli saw that, and he didn't quite like it, Bernoulli. So he um, modified the Newton notation so instead of dots, it has little primes after it. Technically, Newton on his own is y with a little dot. That's Newton. Right, like that. Which wasn't really super helpful. <laughs> Newton's a physicist at heart, so what can I say? Um, so this is Bernoulli, um, Bernoulli riffing on Newton's notation. Newton, of course, really did that. And then the... In Calc 1, we do a lot of Bernoulli notation, just lots of primes. And this is, of course, Bernoulli also. Um, but in Calc 2, we're actually going to use Leibniz notation a lot. Leibniz was the German philosopher um, polymath who also thought of calculus. And then he and Newton spent the rest of their lives arguing with each other about who invented it first. Um, technically, Newton invented it first, but he didn't tell anybody. And he didn't publish first. Um, well, he did, but only by accident. Well, not by accident. He was basically out to get Leibniz for the rest of his life. So there's a whole book about it called The Calculus Wars, if you're interested. All right. So this is also Leibniz notation. So this is Leibniz. This is Bernoulli. It's just modified versions. This is actually Euler notation. Euler was um, Swiss, German, I can't remember. Um, but he thought of this notation, which actually becomes very useful in differential equations. So, um, and actually a little bit in Calc 3 sometimes. So that's actually a notation. It's saying, take the derivative with respect to x of this function y. So that's another um, useful notation. Now, the thing that's better about Leibniz notation, Leibniz, Leibniz is the bomb. Like We like Leibniz notation as mathematicians. It's where we'd like to go. So Leibniz notation is really useful because you can treat in particular, the d over dx part as if it's an operator. And we do, right? It's a mathematical operator, just like 
pluses and minuses, division and multiplication, squaring, taking it to the exponential power, natural logs, and so on. d over dx, as well as its companion, which we learned from the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is the integral, right? So the integral with respect to x and the derivative with respect to x, those two are our mathematical operators. They're calculus operators, and so they're more advanced than something you learn in algebra class. Well, actually, basic math class, algebra class, pre-calculus class, right? And now we're in calculus, and so we use those operators. I couldn't bear it. I had to go look it up. Um, both Euler and Bernoulli, I should have listened to my first instinct, they're both Swiss. Um, and I believe Leibniz was German, although Germany didn't really exist as a country back in the 1700s. And uh, Bernoulli in particular was a was a proponent of Leibniz in the great Leibniz-Newton controversy.